MTV's news update for today, March 5, 2021. I'm Ashley Scotland. First, our top headlines. PNCR member resigns. 11 touts arrested to be charged. Alleged serial rapist slapped with more charges. And in sport, committee formed to develop para archery locally. Now for the news in details. Former Municipal Councillor for Region 10, Lennox Gaspel, has resigned from the People's National Congress reform, the sixth member to resign from the APNU AFC coalition since the change of government last August. Here is Shamar Elaine. Lennox Gasper confirmed that he resigned from the People's National Congress in a letter to the General Secretary of the PNCR, Abna Ali. According to the resignation letter seen by MTV News Update, Casper said he had high hopes that the coalition would have implemented a rapid development rescue plan for Linden, but hurdled scores of new taxes instead of easing the burdens of the township. Casper, in a telephone interview with this newscast, said that the party has lost its way and has not been representing the people of Guyana. First, attempted to increase the own salary. Then when they started to release these other towns and show development in these towns, Bartica and the other places, and Linden was still in the struggle, people not having money in their pockets, people not able to afford basic amenities. These situations were the reality on the ground. And when they have the meetings, they would just try to sue and oh, they got to give the party more time, and the president got so much things to do. People were even upset at the fact that I think it's a year or something, and, and they did it. The president didn't even come to see them. The former municipal councillor blasted the party for the various tactics it used to attempt to rig the March 2 elections and the blatant lies it used to deceive its membership. He also encouraged other members who hold similar views as him to do the right thing and part way with the party. He would say, do not stay silent. Speak. Speak up. The only way the party can truly change and transform and if ever they are going to regain power they have got to start listening to their people and stop bullying things and believe it is their way or the highway it is always a bullyism it's always we give the instruction you follow comply and then complain only two weeks ago joel edmund and renard ward all members of the alliance for change resigned the APNU AFC coalition came on the fire after it attempted to steal the March 2 general and regional elections, throwing the country into a five month elections impasse. Reporting for MTV News Update, Shamar Allen. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony said Guyanese with hearing impairments can look forward to improved audiolo audiology services from government institutions. The health minister said the government intends to examine the needs of that department as it works to improve the health sector. He said the ministry's collaboration with international NGO Starkey Hearing Foundation has ended and the government is working on restarting this program where persons were provided with free hearing aids or at a reduced cost. Minister Anthony said the ministry over the last couple of months has been looking at different options to restore this particular service for the hearing impaired. More news coming up on the other side of the break. You taste the cheese, you hear the crunch. Grab a zoomers and zoom into fun. And with the first taste, you feel like you know what it done. Blast off to a whole new place with every single bite. The cheesy goodness bring your taste buds alive. Let's just zoom in the fun with this wheel shaped light. Zoomers, zoomers, zoom in the fun. Are you running around looking for construction materials? Well, run down to Lens for affordable, high quality building supplies. We have the widest range of grade A floor and wall tiles in any shape, size, and designs, and all types of ceramics porcelain glazed and full body porcelain we stock the largest collection of large format tiles check out our porcelain slabs as big as 10 feet by four and a half feet 
add a bit of elegance with our large range of decorative molding. Our line of PPG paints will give you vibrant colors that won't fade. With our wall and ceiling gypsum system, it's light, durable, and fast. So come down to Lens at 136 Cherry Street, which is next to Buddy's and Pizza Hut for that 31 years of lens quality. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. As a new mom, there are moments of pride, joy, and doubt. Yes, doubt. Has he slept enough? Does she have everything that she needs? Will she be okay in the sun? These doubts come from love. For the good of baby, two servings of Nestum are full of all the goodness and naturalness of the cereals that your baby needs to blossom. That's one less thing to worry about. Nestum, it's all good, mom. Learn more online with Nestle Baby and Me. <laughs> this is MTV's news update. Welcome back. President Dr. Irfan Ali said the government remains fully committed to the settlement of the Guyana-Venezuela border matter at the International Court of Justice. More on this report. President Dr. Irfan Ali said the government will not be engaging neighboring Venezuela on issues related to their borders as the matter is presently before the International Court of Justice. He said the government has been continuously engaging the international community as well as regional and bilateral partners on the matter and has received full support. Dr. Ali assured that the government will maintain a close relationship with all partners and continue to monitor neighboring Venezuela. We are not discussing issues in relation to our borders outside of that, which is not the only recently, two Venezuelan Sukhoi Su-30 fighter jets flew over the community of Eteringbang and the airstrip at a very low altitude. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation has dispatched a protest note to Venezuela and is awaiting that country's response. From TV's News Update, Chelsea Lee. Minister of Public Works Bishop Juan Edgel has submitted to the National Assembly new regulations under the Civil Aviation Act to ensure the safety of passengers, crew and airport staff in the new COVID environment. Minister Edgel told the Department of Public Information that the regulations will cater for use of proper signage and the appropriate seating arrangements consistent with COVID-19 social distancing guidelines to mediate transmission of the disease. In addition to this, the regulations will impact the operations at security checkpoints, including the cleaning of public areas of the airports, flight crew procedures, airborne and underground, the processing of arriving passengers, aircraft operations and sensitization of personnel and the transport of human remains. COVID-19 testing requirements are also a major part of the regulations as airline operators are mandated to, all, to only check in passengers leaving Guyana with negative polymerase chain reaction or antigen tests. For arriving passengers, a negative PCR test for COVID-19 is still compulsory. Further, the regulations stipulate penalties for passengers, airport and aircraft operators for any breach of the regulations. Minister Edgel emphasized that the regulations are to safeguard Guyanese from the spread of COVID-19 and a commitment was made to update the regulations when necessary. The Guyana Civil Aviation Authority under the Ministry of Public Works has outlined a number of standard operating procedures that guide the operations at the country's two main international airports and at local aerodromes. ExxonMobil Guyana President Alastair Rutledge has made it pellucid that the oil company has not violated any permit as there is no limit on the amount of gas that the company can burn on board the Lisa Destiny. Here is Shamar Elaine. President of ExxonMobil Guyana Alistair Rutledge said the company is not confined to 14 cubic feet as suggested in media reports. Vice President Bar Jagdale had said that if the company surpasses 14 cubic feet in flaring, it would be committing a violation. However, Rod Ledge noted that the 14 cubic feet was birthed from assessments in the LISA Phase 1 Environmental Impact Assessment. 
there's there's one particular number that's been thrown around a lot, which is number of 14 billion cubic feet of cumulative flare within 18 months of startup. Um, we, well, for one, are not above that number, but two, that number is not a permit commitment, nor is it a, an allowance. It is a number that was used within the environmental impact assessment. In response to comments that flaring could be reduced significantly if production levels were cut, ExxonMobil's production manager, Mike Ryan, said that this would be impossible. We cannot compress that low pressure stream without the flash gas compressor, no matter what the production level is. And so, you know, comments to that effect of, of reducing by 15 is just, it's not correct. I understand it's technical. Uh, but in order for us to get back to pilot flare levels, uh, we need that flash gas compressor or we need to reduce production to zero. In January last, ExxonMobil announced that it had increased natural gas flaring due to problems with its compressor. The compressor has been repaired in Germany and is expected to arrive in Guyana in a matter of weeks. So far, ExxonMobil's flaring from December 2019 to date stands at 13 million cubic feet. Reporting for MTV's News Update, Shamar Allen. Still ahead, 11 touts arrested and to be charged. And Central Bank says First Citizens Bank has no license to operate in Guyana. Let FiberTech help you to renovate, refresh, and redecorate your kitchen. Spice up your kitchen with decorative colors, finishes, and accessories. Choose from an array of designs and beautiful granite colors that are blended to suit your choice. FiberTech Lifetime Kitchen is durable, thermites-free, and water-resistant. Enjoy one-year factory warranty along with our after-sale service. So come on in and let us help you choose wisely. Running a business? Customs clearance taking up too much of your time? Messi has the solution. Air or sea cargo, import or export. Their trained staff, including licensed customs house brokers, ensure enhanced customer service every time. And Messi's Escuda certification and proven track record in hazmat shipment and HSSE make them the ideal choice for Guyana's growing oil and gas industry. Let Messi's 50 years experience in customs brokerage work for your company. Call them on 220-8198 or email them at custom.gy at messigroup.com. Messi, a force for good. now using Softex toilet tissue. Available in leading supermarkets countrywide, Softex is always silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp and babies love it. Softex comes available in single rolls, economy pack, six pack, and one dozen packages. Just perfect for any budget. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, telephone 622-4197. As a new mom, there are moments of pride, joy, and doubt. Yes, doubt. Has he slept enough? Does she have everything that she needs? Will she be okay in the sun? These doubts come from love. For the good of baby, two servings of Nestum are full of all the goodness and naturalness of the cereals that your baby needs to blossom. That's one less thing to worry about. Nestum, it's all good, mom. Learn more online with Nestle Baby and Me. <laughs> You're tuned to MTV's News Update. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony is encouraging the public to take the final dose of medication to safeguard themselves from lymphatic filariasis during the ongoing house-to-house -house distribution process. Here are the details. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony said the final dose of the pills is currently being distributed. 
The entire distribution process, which started last month, should be finished at the end of this month. Guyana has rolled out a mass administration of medicines across the country to eliminate filaria in keeping with the recommendation from the World Health Organization. Once the program is successful, the World Health Organization would declare Guyana filaria-free. The health minister said once 70 percent of the population takes the medicines, Guyana would be closer to becoming filaria-free. Uh, as of yesterday, we had 321,823 persons who have taken the filaria tablets. And um, this is a very good response, but we want more people to engage us and to take those tablets. A combination of the three pills will be given to individuals on the basis of their height. Pregnant women, seriously ill persons, children less than two years old and shorter than 90 centimeters of height will not be given the pills. Filaria is transmitted from person to person through mosquito bites. The most apparent symptom of filaria is chronic swelling or elephantitis, which is swelling of the legs, arms, scrotum, vulva and breasts. From TV's news update, Chelsea Lee. Ranks of the traffic office broke down today conducted an exercise to eradicate touts around the various minibus parks of Georgetown. A total of 11 persons were arrested for soliciting passengers pending charges. Following the announcement by the Bank of Nova Scotia of an agreement of sale of its Guyana operations to Trinidad and Company, first the Citizens Bank, the Bank of Guyana has made it known that the financial institution does not have a license to operate locally. Here is more. The Bank of Guyana said it noted that the First Citizens Bank has entered into an agreement to purchase the Bank of Nova Scotia's operations in Guyana. It said, First Citizens Bank does not have a license to operate in Guyana. The Bank of Guyana said the financial institution has not submitted an application in keeping with the requirements of the Financial Institutions Act 1995 to acquire control of a bank operating in Guyana. First Citizens Bank has placed a notice in Trinidad and Tobago's daily newspapers informing of its decision to enter into a purchase and sale agreement with the Bank of Nova Scotia, subject to regulatory approvals and routine closing conditions. Bank of Nova Scotia also made a similar statement, noting that both banks will work to ensure the transition does not cause major disruption to customers. Senior Minister in the Office of the President with responsibility for finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, has said that he is pleased with the decision by Scotia Bank to announce the sale of its local operations. The Finance Minister said that the announcement is both premature and inappropriate, especially since the regulatory process had not been initiated, much less concluded. This is Scotia Bank's second attempt in recent times to sell off its operations. From TV's news update, Chelsea Lee. Here is Shamar Elaine with tonight's court roundup. A 32-year-old taxi driver was today found guilty of raping a 12-year-old schoolgirl. Shahadi Opuran, called Omish, was on trial for the offense before Justice Joanne Barrell and a 12-person jury in the High Court. The court heard that on September 27, 2019, Puran engaged in sexual penetration with the child. On the day in question, the child left home and went to school, and while standing on the road waiting for a taxi to get to the road head, from where she would then board a minibus to get to school, Puran drove up to the girl and offered to drop her to school for free. However, Puran took the child to his house where he raped her. During her testimony to the court, the young girl said that after she was raped, she then went to school and told her teacher what transpired. As a result, her parents were called in and a report was made to the police. Puran was subsequently arrested and charged with the crime. He was remanded to prison until March 24, 2021 for sentencing. 37-year-old Thurston Sample was today remanded to prison for allegedly engaging in sexual penetration with a woman without her consent.
Sample was hauled before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan in the Georgetown Magistrate's Court and was not required to plead to the charge, which stated that between February 24, 2021 and February 25, 2021, he engaged in sexual penetration with a woman without her consent. The court heard that Sample paid the woman $10,000 to have sex with him. During the act, the woman complained of experiencing pain. As such, the man told the woman to perform oral sex on him, which she refused to do. The man then allegedly went into the kitchen and returned with a knife and threatened the woman to perform oral sex. Terrified, the woman complied and some time later, she managed to escape through his window and raised an alarm. Neighbors came to her rescue and escorted her to the hospital. He was remanded to prison until March 11, 2021. Sample is presently listed for trial at the Demerara High Court on rape charges. He allegedly raped two sex workers. 33-year-old Versami Armogan and Alma John were today slapped with two separate trafficking in narcotics charges. The duo appeared before Magistrate Vinita Singh in the Georgian Magistrate's Court and pleaded not guilty to the charge. The court heard that on March 3, 2021, at 68 Glasgow Village, East Bank Burbies, the duo trafficked 44.974 kilograms of cannabis. They will return to court on March 26, 2021. O'Neill Nazarene, called Long Hair, a minor of Lethem Region 9, was today charged for frivolous wounding committed on Curtis Thomas. The man appeared at the Georgian Magistrate's court via Zoom before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan, where he pleaded guilty. He was sentenced to 18 months imprisonment. Reported for MTV's Court Roundup, Shamar Allen. <laughs>
Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 226-1292. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., Guyana's sole distributor of NP and Ultra Lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sales service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. The Barbies Cricket Board will be hosting the Hetmeyer and Gordon Challenge Cups this weekend. They have successfully hosted four grassroots tournaments last weekend. West Indies player Shimran Hetmeyer and his wife Nirvani will be sponsoring two Hetmeyer Cups at the Rose Hall Kanji and Young Warriors grounds, respectively. While former national player Jeremy Gordon would be sponsoring the Gordon Challenge at the Edinburgh Ground, located at East Bank Burbies. Twelve clubs will be taking part this weekend. President of the Burbies Cricket Board, Hilbert Foster, said a total of ten grassroots tournaments would be played across the country with the objectives of allowing minor clubs the opportunities of winning titles, to return the passion for the game, and to identify new talents for further development. Social distancing would be in practice in the pavilion while no spectators will be allowed into the venue. Meanwhile, rival teams Albion and the Rose Hall Town Namelco are expected to clash in the long-awaited finals of the 2019 Elizabeth Styles Under-21 on Saturday at the Area H Ground. Both teams are very strong and have been eagerly awaiting these finals since it was postponed in March of last year. Foster stated that the BCB had eight finals to play off from the suspended 2019-2020 season and is seeking to play them off by the end of April. We tell you now, head coach of Archery Ghana, Nicholas Hing, said the association has established a special committee mandated to develop the sport of para-archery. In addition to this, the association is looking to bring more females on board to develop the sport. Sports medicine is very important. Um we are currently looking for someone um, because um, especially with para archery there are classifiers that are needed these people are able to classify under which category a para archer should fall and that person has to be either a doctor or a physiotherapist. A chairperson has also been appointed to chair the International Archery Committee to deal with gender equity matters in South America. Um, Archery Ghana is also um, on the Gender Equity Committee of the World Archery Americas, meaning that we need a lot more women involved in archery and there's a push for that. So, you know, all that can help to spread and you know, develop archery in Guyana. Meanwhile, the first ever inter-school golf championships in Guyana have commenced. Participants include 26 boys and 24 girls from five schools across the country. The Guyana Golf Association said the teams will be competing for the title of top junior golfer to bring home honors for their school. The introduction of golf to schools is a joint project between the Ministry of Education Allied Arts Unit and the Guyana Golf Association. The program has seen tremendous success with hundreds of students being given the chance to play and an array of corporate sponsors lending their support. The pilot program, which is training students who wish to write golf as a sports elective in CSEC or CAPE, is set to expand to as many as 90 secondary schools by the end of 2021. Currently leading the competition is Elisha Smith from Anne Regina Secondary School, with 80 for the boys, and a tie between Suzette Joseph and Sabrina Balgabin with 70 from Burbies Educational Institute. 
The winners will be tallied from the results and determined after today's rounds. Finally, the President's inaugural three-day softball cup begins today and will conclude over the weekend. The tournament is part of President Dr. Irfan Ali's initiatives to expand sports beyond the capital city and expose Guyanese from all walks of life to a wider range of sporting disciplines and to promote fitness programs in communities. The event was launched in February. It is being organized by the Georgetown Softball Cricket League and Guyana's Honorary Consul to Florida, Ramzan Roshanali. The president plans to invest in facilities and programs across the country in the future. He believes that every region should have facilities of international standards to host different sports competitions and to accommodate an audience for both daytime and evening events. The tournament will be contested in three divisions, namely Open, Far 10 over and the 5th 10 over. The teams are competing for the first place prize of $500,000, while runners up in each category will receive $100,000. For MTV Sports Update, Jessica Kautner. That brings us to the end of Sport Update, which was brought to you with the kind compliments of ISG. More after the break. Get the right seal right now from Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc your immediate SKF sealing solutions. The SKF seal jet machine is capable of building seals from five millimeter to 600 millimeter in diameter in under five minutes. With technical support readily available, you can get a customized seal to suit virtually any industrial application like buffer, rod, wiper, and piston seals. SKF seal jet machine, now at Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. And that brings down the curtain on tonight's newscast. But before we go, here is a reminder of our top stories. PNCR member resigns. 11 touts arrested and to be charged. Alleged serial rapist slapped with more charges. And in sport, committee formed to develop power archery locally. Catchery broadcast tomorrow at 6 hours 30. Don't forget to like our Facebook page where the news can be viewed live at 19 hours 30. On behalf of our news and technical teams, Ashley Scotland saying stay safe and goodbye for now.